the hell is this? <laughs> hey guys, welcome to another Dance News Reviews. I'm your host, Dance News. Let's get to the reviews. Catchphrase. Today I am reviewing The Amazing Spider-Man! No webs are coming out. So yeah, sorry for the slight lateness of this review. I forgot to review it in the last bulk recording of Dan Seuss Reviews. Sorry about that. Um, essentially this movie is a, a complete redo of the Spider-Man franchise, um, starting with uh, this new Peter Parker, played by Andrew Garfield. They go back to high school, um, and the story, the entire story plays out in high school, um, which is actually something I thought that was a bit cooler um, comparative to the original Tobey Maguire movie, because I felt like they got out of high school very fast. And I also didn't buy the fact that Tobey Maguire was in high school, considering he was probably in his mid to late 20s at that point. So is Andrew Garfield, but Andrew Garfield looks like a teenager, which is kind of creepy. But yes, so um, it's pretty much the same story. Uh, Peter Parker gets bitten by a spider, but this time the Peter has kind of a different, deeper, darker past where uh, where they kind of explore um, why his parents left. Um, and it also ties a bit into the villain of this movie, played by Reese Siphons, um, the lizard. So it, it is kind of wonderfully intertwined, intertwining the origin with the villain um and yeah so as opposed to a coincidental thing which is kind of like the original spider-man i kind of comparing the original spider-man a lot and i usually don't like doing that but when you kind of do a remake and you make it so similar um i don't know this this movie had many kind of repeated scenes almost um because when you kind of do the reboot you kind of have to go back and and do it again um so i'll get to that criticism in a little bit but uh pretty much um, the only thing that's kind of different from the beginning of this is, is that Peter's uh, family um, has left him with his aunt and uncle. He's had to grow up um, wondering why his parents left but not knowing. Um, and uh, he's just a regular kid going through high school um, through a series of events, ends up getting bitten by the spider, and becomes slowly Spider-Man. And also kind of in the same vein, he's, he's somewhat responsible for the creation of the, the villain of the movie, the lizard, um, and things play out while he's kind of falling in love with Gwen Stacy, played by Emma Stone. So that's the movie kind of in a nutshell. So yeah, the actors. I want I want to start off with the actors. Andrew Garfield is excellent as Peter Parker. He is Peter Parker from beginning to end of this movie. I really liked him in the role. Um, I, I would have to say all around the acting in this movie was excellent from every single part. Um, uh, Martin Sheen as uh, Uncle Ben was excellent. Um, Sally Fields was all right as Aunt May. Um, she wasn't terrible. She wasn't terrible, but I don't think Aunt May seemed kind of um, slightly off to me in this film. Um, she was. She gets worried a lot, um, and that's it. Like she just gets worried. Like, oh, I'm so scared for you, Peter, and and that's it. There's there's no real like. I don't feel like there's any sort of. I don't know when you when you kind of try that relationship so much when you put tension on there um, and she she is worried um, then kind of follow through with it it just seems like she's worried and then we go on to the next scene and the movie continues like that's just it she's just worried but um, uh, Martin Sheen was excellent uh, he he kind of gave the the proper emotion that uh, Uncle Ben kind of needed to have for this film yeah so yeah he was excellent. Uh, Emma Stone uh, and Andrew Garfield, um, kind of their chemistry together, um, was good. Uh, I, I, they were very convincing high school, romantic, elite involved teenagers. I just messed up saying romantically. But um, they, their, their relationship was really well portrayed in the film. Uh, Reese Eifens as the lizard, kind of all right. Um, his character, I, th I, I feel, was more interesting early on, but as the movie progressed, it his motivation seemed kind of wonky to me. Um, I, I guess it's just he's going a bit crazier now that he's a lizard. But um, yeah, it, it it was kind of uh, kind of not. 
the, his motivations were just kind of off to me. Um, it's just like, I'm going crazy, so I'm going to kill Spider-Man. Um, it, it seems it, it always goes that way with villains in films. His performance was good early on in the film, and his character actually was interesting. Supposedly, there was a lot of stuff with his family that was cut out of the film, because seemingly in the movie, the guy's by himself. It doesn't seem like he has a family. Um, you know, we, we go to his house at one point, but um, there is no family, um, <laughs> which in the comic books, he has a family, and apparently in the film they intended for him to have family, but they cut it out. So I don't know if that would have helped me kind of connect to him a bit more, because early on I was with him, but as the film progressed, it just felt weird that he was... <sighs> I don't know. His his motivations just seemed completely off to me. I don't. I didn't know why he was doing the stuff he was. Um, so that's not a good thing in a movie when you don't understand the main kind of antagonist's uh, motivations. But uh, and then the last character, Spider Man. <laughs> He's a different character from Peter Parker. Um, but yeah, Spider Man. He. Uh, I, I liked uh, that they kind of injected a bit more smart assness into Peter Parker. That's something that was completely missing from the Tobey Maguire uh, films. Although I don't think there was, I think this was kind of marketed for to for, for him to seem kind of smart-assy, but he was less smart-assy than I, than I thought he would have been, um, which kind of sucked because there were moments of, of smart-assness, but uh, I wish there were more because Something I loved about the comics was was kind of reading Peter's quips, uh, you know, to villains and random street thugs and stuff like that. And he was generally put it pretty hilarious. Um, and that's something I felt was kind of it, they hit on it a bit more, but I think they needed to hit on it more. Um, ultimately, I feel like the movie kind of hit uh, uh, a lot of the same ground with the the original Spider-Man, Sam Raimi Spider-Man. Um, and I enjoyed myself. I had a good time. Um, but I felt kind of like, not that it wasn't necessary. Um, I think this movie served as setting up this slightly new, this new universe that had kind of a slightly different origin. And I'm more excited to see what they do with the next film rather than what they did with the first film. Um, it just seems like the first film was here to set up a new Peter Parker, new Spider-Man, um, and then, you know, go off on their own direction. Hopefully they, they don't tread any more ground that's been done with the original trilogy, um, because then what was the point? Um, so I feel like I can't go too high with this movie. I, I'd have to give it a uh, 7.5 out of 10. Um, it didn't blow my socks off, but a lot of, they got a lot of the elements right um, that weren't necessarily right in the original trilogy. Um, so hopefully they can continue, continue on and make a great new series uh, with this new Spider-Man and everything. So yeah, that's my review of The Amazing Spider-Man. Doing that again. Whee! So as always, let me know what you thought of the film down below in the comment section. Yep, I'd like to know. Do you kind of agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Um, do you think the movie was terrible? Do you think it was good? I always like to know. Yep. Just gonna stand here now. Vigitos. Bye.